Thank you so much, Chamberlain. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Business Morning on Sunrise Daily, where we do business for just about 30 minutes before we head back to the Sunrise Daily Studio. We begin, as usual, from the global space, telling you what has happened to oil prices this morning. We see a major drop in oil prices, uh, about 3% uh, during Asian trade on Tuesday, on the back of weaker demand outlook after uh, a media report said that Israel is willing not to strike Iranian oil targets, which is the fears that supply could be affected. So we look, put a number to that percentage and we have about a $2.35 drop on Brent. And uh, while for uh, WTI, it's $2.26. So we see that uh, price, Brent has settled at $75.11 after losing that uh, 3%. So our WTI uh, settled at $71.57 after losing 3.1%, which is about $2.26. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has told the United States that Israel is willing to strike Iranian military target, but not uh, nuclear or oil ones. So that has kind of eased the fear that supply may be affected. Also, OPEC has cut its forecast for global oil demand growth in 2024. China, we talked about China yesterday, accounting for the bulk of the downgrade. China's demand is now seen growing by 580,000 barrels per day, down from 650,000 barrels, which was the initial level. So OPEC has also lowered its global oil demand growth projection for next year to 1.64 from 1.74. So all of that has uh, uh, brought down the price of uh, crude oil this morning. Now, yesterday we had, uh, well, very not so good looking numbers for the Naira. There was an intervention by the central bank towards the close of trade. And so we saw uh, that uh, huge uh, gain on the value of the Naira, 5.38%. And that is about 88 Naira. 88 Naira, 35 Kobo uh, was the gain. 1,552 Naira, 92 Kobo. I mean, kind of comforting when you see 1,005, but then when you see it one day and then the next day is jumping, uh, then it, it does, uh, you know, bring a, a level of uncertainty. And uh, for the NFX, uh, NAFEX, it uh, gains 0.43%. As we know, this is the major market where a lot of activities and demand is being absorbed. But of course, there was that uh, intervention from the central bank towards the close of trade yesterday. And... Um, it looks like the CBN will continue to be active in the market to sustain this level for the Naira. Now, yesterday, the World Bank cuts its growth forecast for sub-Saharan Africa economies this year to 3% from 3.4%. In this latest regional economic outlook report, Africa's polls, the international finance institution, says that this is mainly because of the impact of the civil war in Sudan, which has devastated economic activity and caused starvation and widespread displacement. However, the World Bank forecasts next year's growth for the region at 3.9%, above its previous uh, prediction of 38 and well above the other one of 2.4%. And they say this is because of higher private consumption and investment, just as it affirms earlier projection made in June, that Nigeria's economy will grow by 3.1% this year. We know already we are at 3.1%, uh, but they're saying that by the end of this year, that's the World Bank, we would hit 3.3%. So uh, just a couple of points there, but we know that's not easy to hit. Well, at the same time, growth in the continent is most, uh, the continent's most advanced economy, that's South Africa, is expected to increase by 1.1% this year and 1.6% in 2025. That's up from 0.7% the previous year. Stakeholders in the renewable energy space are currently meeting in Nairobi, Kenya, to discuss matters impacting investment in Africa's clean energy development. The forum, uh, put together by Accelerated Partnership for Renewables and the International Renewable Energy Agency, and top on the agenda as they meet, is ramping up Africa's investment in renewable energy. Ladi Williams is there, sent in this report. It's the Accelerated Partnership for Renewables in Africa Investment Forum and Kenya's plain host. This forum is put together by the International Renewable Energy Agency and on the front banner is investment in renewable energy in Africa. 
Africa has accounted for only 1.6% 1, of the global share of installed renewable power capacity. And in 2023, Sub-Saharan Africa energy transition related investment was 40 times less than the world average for per capita. Energy insecurity is becoming a major pain for African countries and at the same time protecting the environment requires a delicate balancing act. Tripling the deployment of renewable energy is a crucial part of the strategy to reach these global targets. Across Africa, many countries have embraced renewable energy to accelerate their energy transition efforts. Kenya itself stands as a leader with over 90% of our electricity coming from renewable sources. According to IRENA, Africa must double its investment in renewable energy to meet its transition target, and finance is a big headache. Well, it's been a long day of high-level discussions today, and a lot has been said, but definitely the bottom line is, as countries and the world move towards reducing emissions at this time, Africa needs to ramp up investment. That is the crux of the matter today, but definitely a lot has to be done. Ladi Williams reporting for Channel Television News. Yeah, Ladi Williams there. That's why you've not been seeing him in the studio uh, since this week. But see, we'll have him next week and then we'll take our turns. Well, now the manufacturers are looking at the imperatives of an intentional development of the Nigerian manufacturing sector. That's the theme uh, that was couched with deep reflection on the growth trajectory of the manufacturing sector in Nigeria. They consider the high and rising cost environment of them in the environment as it continues to shrink profitability and in many cases threaten the existence of many operators in the critical sector of the economy the association is worried uh, about the fact that the sector should propel job creation productivity and economic growth but is enmeshed with series of challenges that constantly limits its contribution to the gdp if you want to sell your products, you have to be sure you will display your wares and you do all it is to ensure that your wares is known and purchased. If you are interested in some cost, either corporate or otherwise, you bear the cost. But you may want, I mean, I see for that, that the high cost of oil is not making things easy for everyone, including business people and individuals as well. What that has meant is that it has added to your cost of doing things, cost of doing business, cost of living, and the rest of like that. So what everyone is doing is to either adjust and prioritize what needs to be done, or add it to your cost so that you'll be able to achieve your role. And what you have done is to be sure that our members understand the advantages of coming to the event. The stakeholders are coming to understand the importance of coming to the event. And beyond this, most of the participants are Nigeria patriots who really share the view of growing Nigeria out of these current uh, problems. All right, uh, so uh, those are some of the challenges, obviously, that the manufacturers are facing reality to a lot of us. Now, let's uh, look at the oil and gas sector this morning. It's Commodities Day. So we're doing this with Dr. Ifo Mawokolo, joins us virtually, as usual, from Victoria Island. Uh, Dr. Mawokolo, good morning, and thank you for joining us on the program. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Great. So we saw that uh, disturbing news that Nigeria's oil production has declined by more than 2%, uh, just when we're about to relax and, and hope that uh, the profits or the fruits of the uh, fight against oil theft was coming to fruition. Uh, do we know how or what this means, this reduction in production? Okay, honestly, is is um, getting difficult this time because we keep um, repeating the same thing. So the evils befalling this industry is basically due to vandalization, we know, of the pipelines, and we see that 
like Belima oil has not been functioning for over three years now. It just started functioning since 2021 due to vandalization of the pipeline that we take oil to the terminal. So this is a major issue. This is um, theft issue, vandalization. Then we have our infrastructures that are outdated infrastructures when it comes to that sector. So if these things are updated and then there is conscious, or how do I put it, conscious management of these theft um, issues that we're having. So government have to, to do something about it because it's a structural problem that needs to be addressed. Yeah. So when we do that, we begin to see that our production will increase. And this is what is actually affecting the prices of, um, well, uh, production of oil at this time. The production is low. So what do you see? You see that the prices will increase because we are not supplying as supposed. So that's what we are seeing today. Another worrying fact is the cooking gas. And NPC had told us that they are supplying more than enough into the market. But we keep seeing the price jump. Uh, for instance, over this weekend, 12.5 um, kg of cooking gas has gone up to about 18,000 naira. Uh, do we know what's driving it at this time in spite of the news that there's an abundance in supply? So there could be an abundance in supply and there could be a fact that this particular gas is being exported. It's possible. So you can, we cannot see NMPC supplying more gas. According to them, they say they supply almost 1.5 million, million um, metric tons per day, and yet we are still buying uh, gas at about 18,000 naira for 12 kg gas. By this time last year, 12 kg gas was sold about between 7,000 and 9,000. So what is the problem? That's the question we begin to ask. So is it that they are producing more of propane than more of butane gases because the butane gases that we use here in Nigeria, we cannot use propane gases. If you produce more of propane gases, so it means that we export more of propane gases and less of butane gases, which is making the cooking gas escalate at this time. And this is not good for consumers because we can, they cannot be battling high prices of commodities and at the same time battling high price of gas, which is a major source of of, of, um, of cooking for them. So something has to be done. Is it there more of propane, um, propane gas is being converted to propane gas so that we can have more? But from what we are seeing, because of the evaluation, um, the regulation, of, sorry, the regulation of um, the, the industry, we can see that we we'll have a, more of um, more refineries coming up today to produce, like I said earlier, the, 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 the Belima oil has started production. And when if they start production, you know what that means. And gas is a byproduct of crude oil, of course we know. So this will bring in competition. And I know in the nearest future, we're going to begin to see the prices of cooking gas come down. All right. Uh, thank you so All much, right. Dr. Ifoma Wonkolo, a research manager at Financial Derivatives Company. Thank you for having me. Um, now we'll head to, for our DSTV viewers, we'll need to lead you to Anambra State. The issue of autonomy of local government well, has been celebrated. We're waiting for implementation. Now we can get the views from Anambra State. The governor of Anambra State, Professor Chukuma Soludo, wants to share the views and perhaps how the state would implement uh, the local government autonomy, which is now a law in the country. So for our DSTV viewers, we hand you over to Anambra State. But for on our other platforms, uh, the local platform and uh, the Channel 24 platform, we'll continue right here uh, in on Business Morning on Sunrise Daily.
All right, now, so let's uh, continue with our conversation right here. And we're talking some winners this morning, uh, winners of the 2024 edition of the Prize of Science, Prize for Science, uh, 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 sponsored by the Nigeria LNG Limited. They are with us in the studio. I'm going to be crowded by two gentlemen. At this time, we have Eni Oko and Olajide Otitoju joining us in the studio. These are very brilliant men. <laughs> I don't know if I should get... Thank you. Intimidated. Uh, I'm winning a prize for science. I know that's a very big deal. Yeah. Um, I can't imagine the, the practice or the studying, the, the uh, preparation that you had to go through to do this. So, uh, well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Where's the money? Can we share? <laughs> 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 well, so what does this mean? Let me start with you. What does this mean for you, the fact that you won this very prestigious? and had fought for prize. Thank you. Um, the prize means uh, a lot for me personally. Um, first, because um, the entire development has been around 14 years in the making. And uh, to finally get some recognitions for it, it's something very, um, very, uh, uh, very special. Um, in 2019, we came close to winning the ICME in the UK Global Awards, and um, we didn't get that. So it's very, very special to be able to get some recognition for that development. Mm, Olajide, what does it mean for you? Is it just the recognition or the money will also serve for something good? I <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, the recognition is, uh, as a scientist, being recognized for your work is what you look towards, not even the monetary part of it. So being recognized for your work, and not just only in Nigeria and uh, across the UK, we have our universities having announced announcements as regards this, and it's not only us now, not only in Nigeria, but people in the UK getting to know about this. So mm. it, it's, a, it's a big thing for us. Yeah, and I know the third winner, Mei Hong Wang, uh, I believe she's South African also? No, no. Mei Hong is a Chinese, um, oh. formerly Chinese. Oh, it's a British, British citizen now. Now, now British. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So it's an international award. And you yes. know, the, the theme or what you competed for is really interesting at a time like this. Mm -hmm. Carbon capture and fuel production. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're talking of, we just talked about cooking gas and how yeah. it's been expensive okay. uh, and all of that. I wonder if this body of knowledge that you have proposed or you have worked on is going to help in any way, you know, we're complaining now. We have gas. We have the potential. Mm -hmm. The thing is turning it into the usable form mm -hmm. uh, for everybody, both for CNG and for LPG. And it seems that's taking us so much time uh, in the country. Yeah, um, it's going to help in so many ways. Um, the first instance being that um, Nigeria as a country already have a target to fully decarbonized by 2060. Um, and uh, our development is targeting the biggest sector when it comes to carbon emissions, the industries and the power generation, um, et cetera. So it's going to help deliver that objective. And for businesses, it's going to help them push up proof their business because decarbonization has become um, a core business strategy because many countries now require, um, now require their companies to only partner with, you know, companies that uh, are committed towards decarbonizing um, their business. So, yes, it's going to help companies to, you know, push up proof their business. And for the local man in the street, it's also very special because part of the things we are proposing is that our system is going to um, capture CO to convert it to methanol. And methanol um, is, can be used for fuel replacement, targeting especially diesel. Diesel is important because of the peculiar characteristics of diesel. So we could have up to 20% diesel replacement. Um, the benefits is that you could drive down the diesel import rates into the country, and which could add up to helping drive down the cost of diesel for the local man in the street. Yeah, but you know, one, one challenge in the Nigerian economy has always been turning the talks into works. Yes. Connecting the academy to the practical. Yeah. So while these sound brilliant and all of that, mm -hmm. is there a plan to connect it and make it a practical reality? Yes, um, of course. We, we are academics and um, our work is simply to try to answer the mm -hmm. key questions that will help drive the development. First of all, 
um, thanks to channels and NLNG and other platforms that have given uh, not just us, but the subject of carbon capture some publicity during this period. So we're using this uh, platform, you know, first of all, to help promote this technology and hopefully draw in businesses, uh, government interest um, to help push forward the development. At our own level, um, we are working towards advancing the technology development at the moment. So there is something they call technology readiness level, which is used to measure how ready a technology is, you know, to get into the market. So you start from technology readiness level one, when it is just an idea in your head, all the way to technology readiness level nine, when it's now a commercial product in the market. At the moment, our development is at around TRL, technology readiness level five, okay? And uh, we still have a lot of work to be able to get to that point. So what we're doing, we've, we've secured some grants and We've secured some grants, have some partners in from Nigeria, from South Africa and other countries. And we are hoping that at the end of the current project we are doing, we can move from TRL5 to TRL7. Yeah. Mm, so let me come to Olajide. Um, tell us more about this preparation and securing of grants. How do we push it forward? How does it come to concern me as you know, a normal average Nigerian mm -hmm. away from the academics and, and all of the talks? to my everyday task in life. Yeah, um, for example, the I think just like uh, Dr. Enef uh, pointed out, there is a Nigerian government has something that is called an energy transition plan, ETP. And in that transition plan, they are looking at decarbonizing uh, the, power, uh, the power sector, uh, industry and transportation sector uh, in 2060. So, and in that plan, they need about 400, uh, $410 billion to implement that. We truly know that we don't have that type of money. Or if we have that type of money, we are not. We cannot invest such amount of money into decarbonizing. And if we do that, then every other sector will suffer. So part of what we are doing with this technology is that we are able. To, we are with this technology. We are able to achieve that at a lower cheaper rate. Even by our own estimate, we might be able to maybe uh, uh, cut off about hundred billion dollars from the uh, from to implement the ETP if we are to use the technology being developed. Just like. He has said, and this we in a, uh, by estimate and in the ETP, is, they said this where they are looking at uh, looking at this is a technology can, that can precipitate up to 100 million jobs, just according to the ETP, uh, the plan that the federal government has in the uh, have in the ETP. So, with the, if this technology come on board, this is why we are talking that we are appealing to the private investors in the country, uh, the federal government. If people, I know the federal government, they have. Uh, an office that is headed by the uh, just uh, uh, Ajuri Gelale, and they are looking at carbon and everything yes, like that. No so it's no longer there. But I know somebody will be coming on board. If somebody is already there, somebody will be coming on board. These are the people we are looking to meet and to talk to and see how this implement, uh, this project can become a Nigerian uh, thing, not just other country, a Nigerian thing, and we can be at the forefront of this uh, climate uh, uh, agenda. Yeah, but in all of this, the issue of infrastructure deficit is a major one. It is. So even, even when we have the beautiful policies and, and the talks, actually putting it on ground, because even at the NNPCL, uh, they do have some projects of infrastructure to connect the gas from, from um, location to destination and all of that. It's a huge one. I wonder mm -hmm. if your conversation is also considering that, because if not, you might have the beautiful print but actually doing it to become a challenge. Yes, like I said, just like he has pointed out, we are scientists. We are develop, scientists, but you want it to We work. develop things. So, and that is why we want people to come on board. It's an investment. Okay, in the UK, last week, the UK government announced uh, 21.7 billion, almost 22 billion uh, pounds for carbon capture and storage alone. So this is a commitment from government that they, are, they will be spending 22 billion on this uh, technology just to look at carbon, how to capture their, decarbonize their uh, industry, glass industry, and their petrochemicals, and every uh, their power plants and everything, and how to store and use those, uh, uh, um, the, the, the CO2 that is being captured. So this is a capital in intensive project, and that is why I was, uh, 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 earlier on, I was talking, okay, federal government, a private investor can come on board and help drive this uh, technology to, uh, for, uh, for that, uh, to the stage where you can come to uh, commercial deployment and it can benefit everybody. Yeah, everybody and I, I guess if there are incentives, investors will come on. Yes, yeah, so um, um, obviously uh, from a develop in an incentive point of view, 
Um, carbon capture is mostly driven by an incentive um, economy, even in other parts of the world. But this is why it is of interest that we are proposing that the CO2 that you are, proposing, you are, you are capturing can be converted to a usable product. That, that's an idea that you know, makes the entire idea of carbon capture um, very, um, very uh, something that is worthy of investment from an investor um, point of view. Um, and not just rely on government incentive, because government will not always have the money to be able to um, finance the entire development. I think what we are doing is to try to um, bridge an important gap. It doesn't discount that there are other problems regarding infrastructure deficit and the rest of them. But what is primary is that there is a bigger problem, which is that there, are, there is a lacking innovation within that space that can, that can be tailored to the Nigerian situation and that can help deliver the solution at a reduced cost. That, that's the key for us. Infrastructure development, of course, in Nigeria, we have all our problems, but it's something that we do not need new technologies to be able to build infrastructures. Mm. It's in the market already. But in terms of the, the, the carbon capture itself, the technology um, at the scale that we are proposing is not available. Well, I, I guess we have to thank uh, Nigeria LNG for even well. beginning this conversation yes, because well. it's because of them and yes. the competition, your winners, and then you, you can further push this dream yes. and, and vision. And we certainly do hope that the brains in Nigeria one day yeah. you know, actually materialize into workable plans for mm -hmm. us. Yeah. Well, thank you so much and congratulations once thank again. Thank you very much. Thank you for having and me. Olajide Otitoju, so as well as Methong, Methong Wang. Methong Wang. Sure, congratulations for him. Thank All you right. very much. We shall do. Thank you thank very you much. So much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much. All right. So uh, congratulations to them and thanks to Nigeria LNG Limited for that competition. I wonder if we do have time. But well, okay, we have we have 55 minutes in the afternoon at 1 p.m. And Ladi will be joining us live. So you want to see him. If you've missed him on the show, you'll see him later on today. But the good news is that yesterday, uh, the market cap at the NGX went to another level. Uh, we've been to that level before, but we can celebrate that. And that's because of Aradel. Aradel got listed yesterday and was very active. We'll give you more details and a great conversation on that at uh, 1 p.m. for Business Incorporated. Let's head you back now to the Sunrise Daily Studio. I'm Ini John Mekwa.